Welcome back. Now it's finally time to use grid. And you have seen how to use stack panel before and rack panel and those two day well stacked and wrapped things up and now we'll check out grid which allows us to position things in a grid and we will start off by simply using a two times two grid and first of all what we need for that is a column and a row definition so we can go ahead and within our grid so go to your XAML file and then within the grid create a grid dot column definition and here you can define your different columns. So first of all, you need the column definitions, plural, and then you can go ahead and create your individual column definitions. For example, you can go ahead and create one here. I'm going to keep it simple in one line, just like that. And what I want to define in here is simply the width. And the width I could, let's say, put it to 100. And now let's create another column which is also going to be 100 wide. Now that's not enough. We also need to have rows, except we only want to have one row. So let's start off with one row only. And I'm just going to create a button first. And this button is going to be saying something like hi there. And it should be in the grid dot column zero. Now I create a second button, which should be the grid.column one. Now, if we look at our design now, we can see we have our two buttons, hi there. Let's run our code just to see how this looks. By the way, they are only 100 pixels wide, as you can see here. So the width is limited to 100 pixels. So if you add a total value here, then that will simply use it as pixels in the width. As you can see here, that's how wide a column is. And of course we could say, ah, we can put some more columns in here easily. Well, we can do that and we'll do that later on. But before we do that, I would like to show you something very important. So if I drag my XAML up here, now it's actually useful because we will see the difference in our UI directly. And I want to change the width from 100 to auto and as you can see what auto does it automatically only takes the width that is required to fit in all the content that there is inside of the element so in our case the button has a text called hi there and that's how much space hi there needs or requires and that's also how wide our button is going to be and as you can see it's for the first column definition so the first column definition where our button with hi there one is that's how the or that's the button that is changed as you can see now it's changed to 59.5 pixels if i add some more text some more text you can see it's widening it to 153.5 pixels so you can easily go ahead and well use auto if you want everything to fit in correctly based on how much space it actually needs but what if I want to make the columns exactly the same width? Well, of course I could use full values here or fixed values here, but I can also use star. And what star will do is it will, if all, them, all of them have star, it will simply say, okay, take up all the space. And in this case, it's only the space available that this specific column has and it's exactly the same as the other. So there is a weighting now. So this has a weight of one and that one has a weight of one as well. So they are equally weighted, which means they are equally width. If we want to change that, let's say I want to make this second one here, the second button double as wide as the first one, I can use double star. So now this one will be twice as wide as the first one. If I, for example, want to have three of the fifth on the left hand side and two fifths on the right hand side as their width, I can simply use this approach as you can see here. So three times the star and two times the star. So what it does, it actually adds it all up and then it only takes the multiplicant of what is set in here. So let's say we have three and two. So what it does, it says, okay, now it's five total 
units that are available and I'm gonna take three fifths of those units. Now you could even go ahead and do something like 100. So you can see this one takes 100 and this only one take one only takes two. So so that's how you can play around with the widths and the same goes for the heights. So now let's go ahead and create a row definition. So grid dot row definitions. And in here we can go ahead and create our row definitions. So the first one, and I'm gonna keep it simple as well, like in one row. And this one needs a height. So I'm just gonna say, okay, I want to have the star height. And now we use the same thing again for the second row. And as you can see, now we have two rows. So one here and the second one at the bottom. And as you can see, the second row doesn't have any content yet. So now let's change that by, let's say, first of all, putting this button here to the bottom right. And how can we do that? Well, we simply use grid dot row and we say it's at row one. Now you might wonder why is it one and why is it not two? Well, as you probably know already in programming, we start counting with zero. So the first row is zero, the second row is one. So now high there is at the second row, which is row one. Now let's go ahead and create two more buttons and maybe even change their names to something that has more to say about their actual info. So I'm gonna put that into the column zero in row one. And that one actually, I'm gonna put it back to zero one and that one will be at one one. And actually that will be column one and row zero like that. So now we have all the buttons and that one will be one, that one will be button two, button three, and button four. Great, so now if we start that, you will see that, well, it counts as well for the UI itself. So one, two, three, four, all right? Now, a little challenge for you, as you have seen how to use grid columns and rows, please go ahead and make a three times three grid here with eight buttons. So one to eight should be buttons and the ninth position. So the bottom right hand position or grid element should be a text block. So please pause the video and try to do that. All right, I hope you tried it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another column by adding a column definition here and it's going to be equally width and the same for the height. It's going to be equally height. And now, as you can see, the buttons, they look a bit weird, uh, but that's just because I haven't zoomed out yet. So now we can see it correctly. Now we have our buttons with zero, one, and so forth. So I'm gonna copy that button here and I'm gonna position it at column two. So row zero and column two. Now you could of course argue it makes more sense to start off with the row and then enter the column. Well, you can do that, but in my case, it's the other way around. In the end, what matters is that you use both of them correctly. Now we have the three buttons at the top. Now let's go ahead and create the second row or finalize the second row. And that's the column two. And I'm gonna copy that well, three times. Actually, two times is enough. And that one will be row two, position zero, and row two, position one, or column one. Now, of course, we need to change the values. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And as I said, at the bottom left, I would like to have a text block. So the text block has the same approach with grids. You need to have a column and a row. So I'm just gonna say this is going to be column two and grid row two as well. So now we're at the bottom left or bottom right. Now we can go ahead and give it some text and I'm just gonna say something like text. Now you might say, oh, I don't like it. The, the text is at the top left. Well, you can easily change that 
by enter entering something like horizontal alignment and use center here. So now it's centered horizontally. Let's zoom in so you can see. All right. And now if I want to center it vertically as well, I simply use vertical alignment and I use center here as well. So now as you see, the button is centered perfectly. And we can even go ahead and change the font size just because we can. And let's make it a little bigger, like 32. And now you can see we have a three times three grid with eight buttons and a text. Now you could go ahead and align all different kinds of elements in your window here, in your main window, in your grid. So that's the beauty about using grids. And as you have seen, you can stack up things. You could create a stack panel with multiple grids and additionally, you have a text in between or something like that. So you're not limited to use one element in here. As you can see, we could go ahead and let's say, put that into a stack panel, stack panel like that. So I'm going to drag the grid. As you can see now it's complaining because the window XAML main window only knows the first one. So it only will see the stack panel. If we now check out our appearance, actually let's stop it so we can see. Now it says invalid markup. So if we take the whole grid inside of our stack panel, as you can see, it's there and it stacks it up. So at the bottom, there's plenty of space. So here we could add another button just so you see that this is possible. And this one is going to be ha to have a height of 100. And now, as you can see, it's all stacking up there at the top. And even though we have this height that they are all the same height, this text needed so much space that it's ignoring that. So the font size is too big. So if we go back to 16, it's still too big. If we go to, let's say 12, now it seems more like it. So whenever you use row definitions with this star, you have to be careful if a element needs more space than there is, then it will overflow. All right, so that's two grids. I'm gonna go back to the beautiful standard grid that we had there. And generally, what I always recommend after you have seen something like that and after you have learned something like that, please go ahead and play around with it. Just play around with some different types of elements. You've seen some already and we'll look into a lot more controls later on. So the ones that we have used so far are mainly buttons, right? And text blocks, but we will use different beautiful controls in the future videos. So see you there.